Hi, welcome back to my commentary on life. The 16 personalities test has been around for a while, but I've seen it getting some attention lately. It's a personality test that's meant to be really accurate. It reads you. It tells you who you are. You don't even fill it in. The personality test is just out there walking the earth and it finds you. And that's how you know what your personality is. I actually took it a few years ago, but I don't remember what my result was. It intrigues me now because I think that our personalities change not in a 360 degree complete pivot way, but in a maturity, change of circumstance and priorities kind of way. And I'm curious to see what it has to say about me. Ooh, the graphic design of this website is pretty nice. Look at all those characters. Okay, here we go. You regularly make new friends. Okay, <laughs> question one. Finger. I kind of do regularly make new friends. Medium agree. You spend a lot of free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. I mean, that's basically what this whole YouTube channel is about. At social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. Strongly agree, and this is why it's so confusing that I also make friends. You prefer to completely finish one task before starting another. I dream that I finish one project and go, ah, job done, let's move on to the next thing. The reality is that I constantly start new projects whilst I'm still working on other ones, but I do finish them. They just pile up. You like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the ending. Oh yeah, I do like that. I actually made a film like that and it drove my friends wild. It was so much fun, like listening to what they thought the film was about. Maybe I should start another one. You are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to do next. Absolutely. There's so much to do in so little time. You enjoy watching people argue. No. It fascinates me when you see a really good argument, like a witty back and forth, like really thought out and like good comebacks. But they only happen in movies. Real arguments are boring. People just repeat themselves and often don't make a good point. I used to watch Real Housewives, that was my guilty pleasure for a time, and the arguments on that show were brilliant, but it was scripted. So you tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. Disagree. You have always been fascinated by the question of what, if anything, happens after death. I don't think anything happens after death. I think your body just stops hosting your activity. It's just switched off. So there's not a lot to unpack. But I love the concept of ghosts. I don't think they are real, but I so hope they are. I really want to be a ghost. You usually prefer to be around others than on your own. This is so hard for me to answer. I like both. I like spending time on my own, working on my videos and watching my own shows and being creative and just having time to myself. But I also love spending time with other people and talking and getting excited about things. I don't know which I prefer. You become bored or lose interest when the discussion gets highly theoretical. Strongly disagree. I love a theory. Let's get theoretical. You usually postpone finalizing decisions for as long as possible. Absolutely agree. I will not book anything unless I can cancel it for free. You are still bothered by mistakes you made a long time ago. What mistakes? I think there probably was a time when I thought about my past mistakes a lot, but I think I've changed, certainly in the last year. And I just see that sort of stuff as like a massive waste of time. Like I think it's good to think about your past, what you learned from it, and then just take the learning. We can't travel back in time, so there's absolutely no point thinking about it as if you can. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but basically, yeah, I just, I think it's a waste of time. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will take them to feel disappointed in you. That's so sad. I've, this, this has never crossed my mind before. When I meet people, I tend to get a reading very quickly of how our relationship will pan out. So either they totally get me and we will be best friends. They're indifferent and we'll just be acquaintances. 
or they do not get me at all. And the thing is that I don't normally meet those people and then never interact with them again. Quite often they are people who I have to be around. But the thing is that like, I know they don't get me, but I'm gonna be polite and I'm still gonna get along with them to a certain degree. It's just that I know that they will never truly connect with me or understand me on a deeper level and that's fine. We'll just do the dance and then hopefully never speak to each other again once our interactions are over. You believe that pondering abstract philosophical questions is a waste of time. Cannot disagree harder. I love philosophical questions. Hit me with that trolley problem. You feel confident that things will work out for you. I work hard to make sure that things will work out for me. But I also really like hate the use of this concept of like how things work out when it comes to like people's lives because people tend to say that about people, you know, throughout their life. So someone could be like, now that you're in your late 20s, things worked out okay. And it's like, what do you mean worked out? Like, it's not over. I haven't stopped learning and growing and adapting to new situations. We do that right up into elderlyhood. It doesn't stop. So the whole like concept of like turned out and like how it ended up, just, I, I've never got it. But yeah, things will work out for me. Time for the results. Right now, I am a protagonist. I mean, I am the protagonist of this video, so. E-N-F-J-A. So that stands for extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging. I'm 57% extroverted. That's okay. I would rate my extroversion introversion at 50-50, but all right. 74% intuitive and only 26% observant. Okay. That's interesting because I would consider myself quite observant. Apparently, I'm 57% feeling and only 43% thinking, which honestly doesn't seem like me either. I don't feel seen. 64% judging to 36% prospecting. Are those opposites? 68% assertive and 32% turbulent. Okay, that I can get on board with. I used to be really indecisive and I actually used to always say in job interviews that my weakness was assertiveness. And it was true, I always put my ideas down and I introduced things by saying like, oh maybe, or I think we could. And like that was something that I wanted to work on. So I worked on it and then I did become more assertive and then that scuppered my whole job interview nice weakness kind of thing. So now I just do what everyone else does and lie and say I'm too dedicated to the job. Protagonists are natural born leaders, full of passion and charisma, forming around 2% of the population. I'm so rare. With a natural confidence that begets influence, protagonists take a great deal of pride and joy in guiding others to work together to improve themselves and their community. This is exactly what I set out to do in my YouTube channel. Just gonna update my bio with that sentence. It's very flattering at the moment, but I just know that they're gonna call me out on my weaknesses just as hard. Look at this little illustration. I already definitely had main character syndrome. And if you don't know what that is, let me know and I'll make a video about it. Okay, my strengths are that I'm tolerant. They admit they don't have all the answers and are often receptive to dissent so long as it remains constructive. Okay, it's beginning to feel more accurate than it did before. Reliable, charismatic. Okay, that's not something I would have described myself as. So let's read the description. Talented imitators, protagonists are able to shift their tone and manner to reflect the needs of the audience while still maintaining their own voice. Altruistic and natural leaders. Now for the weaknesses. Overly idealistic. People with the protagonist personality type can be caught off guard as they find that people fight against them and defy the principles they've adopted, however well-intentioned they may be. They're more likely to feel pity for this opposition than anger and can earn a reputation of naivety. I've had people tell me that I'm too idealistic before as an insult. And I've always been like, I would rather be a big dreamer than a big spoil sport who crushes other people's dreams. Too selfless. I fail to see the weakness so far. Too sensitive. While receptive to criticism, seeing it as a tool for leading a better team, it's easy for protagonists to take it a little too much to heart. I receive criticism so gracefully. 
When I got my first dislike on a YouTube video, I tweeted about it because I was so happy that my videos were reaching people out with my little sphere of friends. I really like the idea that I inspired someone to click on a thumbs down icon. I roused that activity. Struggle to make tough decisions. If caught between a rock and a hard place, protagonists can be stricken with paralysis, imagining all the consequences of their actions, especially if those consequences are humanitarian. I do do that. Under romantic relationships, the results tell me protagonists take dating and relationships seriously, selecting partners with an eye towards the long haul. There's really no greater joy for the protagonist than to help along the goals of someone else they care about and the interweaving of lives that a committed relationship represents is the perfect opportunity to do just that. Hello darkness, my old friend. The career part really interests me. Not because I'm super career minded, but because I like my philosophical musings. When it comes to finding a career, people with the protagonist personality type cast their eyes towards anything that lets them do what they love most, helping other people. Lucky for them, People like being helped and are even willing to pay for it, which means that protagonists are rarely wanting for inspiration and opportunity in their search for meaningful work. That's true. I rarely feel like I have no purpose. The reason I got into filmmaking was to share stories with the world. The conclusion to my personality is, few personality types are as inspiring and charismatic as protagonists. Their idealism and vision allow protagonists to overcome many challenging obstacles, more often than not, brightening the lives of others around them, protagonists' imagination is invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. Yet, protagonists can be easily tripped up in areas where idealism and altruism are more of a liability than an asset, whether it's finding or keeping a partner, staying calm under pressure, reaching dazzling heights on the career ladder, or making difficult decisions, Protagonists need to put in a conscious effort to develop their weaker traits and additional skills. Look at the illustration of my conclusion. Broken heart, house on fire, distress, a demon, this guy who looks angry about something on this sheet of paper. What does that sheet of paper say about me? Is it nasty? What did I do? <laughs> In the movies, this is the kind of situation that leads the protagonist to answer the call of adventure. Adventure, if you're there, call me. I'm gonna have a look at the other personality types and see what they're like. So there are analysts, there are diplomats, which was the category that I came under, sentinels, that sounds like robots, and explorers. Oh my God, they look so much better than what I got. Look at the adventurer. Maybe I'll take the test one day, see myself in shiny gold holding an easel. Thank you for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, then please like it and consider subscribing to my channel because this will let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And if you know anyone who would enjoy this video, then share it with them. Take the test together and then comment your results in this video and I'll comment back and we'll all become best friends and we'll run off into the sunset together. And that's how you make friends easily, folks or however you want to share it is fine. See you next time.